fresh off of a podium finish, a vengeful Stephen Chidwick has announced he is here in event number seven, the chip leader coming in to the 10K No Limit. Continuing coverage of the Poker Masters from inside the Poker Go studio here at Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Almost three million in front of Stephen Chidwick, the leader of a group of five here at this final table. Ali Najad with the play-by-play, -play. Maria Ho with the color, glad to have you with us. And Dan Smith, as mentioned during the pregame show, has made an appearance rallying despite the 10K price point. Typically likes to step up for the big stuff, but certainly with other implications, this is plenty big. And you see Dylan DeStefano, the youngster, just 23 years of age, at his second final table, his third cash of the event, second in chips, Lou Garza. In third, Cowboy Dan, looking more like Hunter Dan this afternoon, a million in front of him in fourth, and Rex Cutton will round out the field with just over 600,000 payouts. 183,600 and of course coveted points for that race for the purple jacket are up for grabs. Points, but if Dylan points. were to win today, he would actually leapfrog Negranu courtesy of the two previous caches that he has had here in the event in the race for the purple jacket. And trouble on the horizon for Dan Smith. Two red eights looking up at the Min Ray's open with the blinds at 25 and 50,000 from Stephen Chidwick, who has two kings. And of course, he has people suspecting that he is going to be a little OOL with yeah. his range, sitting on that big stack and scutting out there with All in. the shorty. And Dan Smith utters tragic two words. Yeah, just that effective stack size of 20 bigs makes oh. it fairly standard against the chip leader opening. And it's going to take something special for Shoots Dan Smith to avoid gifting Breck Scutton a Which pay jump. I'm a hearts man. And we'll put a pin in that Dylan DeStefano story. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> three hearts. King XX, three up. The dealer's waiting yeah. to see your response. I like that. Just to make sure. Go for it. Cards, just, and then you can hit the flush on the turn. Maximum drama. <laughs> yeah, hit the boat on the I can't possibly win. If you're going to be this superstitious, Steve, you just take it. <laughs> wow. How much is it? <laughs> wow, the prepay. Wow, that's Ooh. so close. Ace, nine, six. Not quite what Dan Smith had in mind, but some backdoor opportunities do exist if straightiness appears on the turn, which it does not. So now it is that naked two outer one time for Dan Smith to avoid being the first casualty here at the event seven final table. And instead it is Chidwick who hits a set with the Red King in a short lived participation here at the final table for Dan Smith, 54,000. And is so, Scutton's got a little something for Garza here with Ace King. Wait for it. In. And there it is. How much is it? 425. Garza asking for a count. Not an insignificant 425. No, and in, you would imagine that he is gonna sh reshove pretty, pretty, Snug against your open, but a seven just feels committed for that price. And committed is probably how many sevens in the deck? Not the feeling that Garza has right now. Like fourteen. It is disappointed <laughs> to see that he is dominated. At least when somebody else has it, it feels like there's fourteen. This is exactly what Scutton has been waiting for. Oh, oh. aces and sevens for Garza. Disaster, and the four is an undercard, so won't be counterfeiting this a seven with a four. But now with the ten, there are some options. Six outs for Breck Scutton. Is it there? The no, the eight of diamonds, and really nothing more that Breck Scutton could have done. And the father of four is 
on top of that min raise, and Lou's got something cooking, Ace Jack. This time the three bet will be met with resistance, however, should he opt for it. The pay jump between third and second, for those interested, is just shy of $50,000. Garza electing to flat. And this is the kind of board where he could take extra streets. Certainly one street, clearly given Chidwick's strong holding, he will be firing multiple streets, but can't give up yeah, ace high down. so easily, especially against a fairly wide button range. Seventy K C bet. Ten seconds. Third five on the turn is Really not going to help Lou get away from this ace jack, Maria. He checks one more time, four and a quarter in there. How milky will Chidwick seek to make his sizing here? Or maybe he goes the other way with it and tries to make it look like he's forcing Lou off of his hand. Yeah, of course you want to try to keep some of those straight draws in there. And if you bet here on you know, this type of board, those draws might go away. So some consideration for slow playing, but looks like he's reaching for chips and just probably hoping that Garza has 4X type hand that won't be able to get away. Perhaps some other medium pairs. And again, for Garza, you've got to be thinking, <laughs> this is the chip leader that opened from the button. Certainly, they are going to go multiple streets with this dry of a board. Yep. Boy, that 105 is just so on the nose as far as the sizing that is going to make it almost impossible for Ace Jack to not take a swing. And fives full of fours on the board now. Could it become even more difficult for Garza to get away. It's a little bit disappointing because obviously if you were bluff catching successfully, you are now chopping unnecessarily. However, you know that there's a decent chance that Chidwick could be trying to run you off of playing the board. Exactly. It's hard to get Delta pocket pair. 10 seconds. And just take a look there. You can see Garza's heart just pounding. Oh, Chidwick using the time extension. Master of his craft here. And sizing is going to be key because clearly if you are thinking as Garza, is my opponent going to try to force me off of what looks like a chop here? They might be leaning to go on the bigger side. And <laughs> that is exactly what Chidwick does. Exactly full pot. Boy, what a gross feeling for Lou. It's honestly, you'd rather not see the four. You'd rather see a three, a deuce, something like that, where maybe you can scoop. Here, you know the best you can do is stick 635 out there and hope to pull it back along with half of the middle. Are you going to give him credit for just having a bigger boat than the one that's on the board, which is what he's representing? Or are you just going to think that you are a victim of something that a chip leader who is very capable like Chidwick would do with this particular type of run out, putting all the pressure on the middling stack here in this three 
halfway configuration. It's, it is a tough one for Garza. Do not envy his position right now. I just want to let you have it. Just in case, just in case. Well done. I think I had you on the turn. <laughs> Get quads. I think I had you the whole way, but then just going for a chop at that point, all right? Ollie, I've, I've heard all of the imaginary pretend lives that you think are the leads here, <laughs> but. And I love all of them. <laughs> It's just my childlike imagination running amok. A limp now from Garza, who starts this one with 1.3, just north of 20 bigs. Chidwick with the check back. And a Broadway gutty, along with Queen High for Lou. Checks. Board pairs on the turn. Cars is still checking. Wow, look at that sizing here with a hand that, of course, is no showdown value. And it's just so sick because even if in your heart of hearts you think that this Queen 10 is good, it's the fact that your call will leave this pot at over 700K and you continue to be out of position on the river if you're unimproved. Are you still going to call the sort of bet that Chidwick has enough chips to make on the river and follow through with another street of bluffing? If you find yourself praying for a check back on the river, chances are you've made a, a sketchy call on the turn. Something more to it. My <laughs> type, <laughs> my type for the record is clean cut, nice guys. You mean like Dylan? Aha, uh -huh. and yet I've heard you say nothing about that young man here at this final table, other than good fold. <laughs> Here he is with Ace Jack suited. A clean cut 120K. Garza with this Ace 7. Boy, it feels like he really wants to oh. say it. Oh, and he does. Yeah. All in. And I'm not sure that Dylan's sending Ace Jack suited into the muck. Indeed, he makes the call. And this is a disaster, potentially. We did see an Ace 7 for Garza take down an Ace King earlier in this match. But can he cheat death twice? How many sevens <laughs> are in the deck? Yes, spades? Yep. Yeah, a couple of times we saw Garza avoid put getting himself in this type of situation. Sevens huh? Sevens here. Are hot. Dude, sevens are so hot. Has the ace blocker, but bad seven. timing being dominated. Ace, king, deuce, ace, jack, comfortably in the lead here. Deuce is fair, but the thing is, I really want to win this hand. Well, then seven. Well, if you're going to be greedy, then put a seven. I'm so greedy <laughs> right now. I'm usually never greedy, but I'm really greedy right now. Neither player with a heart as a five rolls off, and the light begins to flicker at the end of the Garza tunnel. He needs himself a seven here to win the pot. What did he say? Deuce. Five a or deuce. a deuce to chop, and instead it's the king that pairs, leaving the jack kicker still in play, and that is the end of the road for Lou Garza. What type of music would you assume that Chidwick enjoys, Maria? Classical, all day, every day. <laughs>
Uh, maybe soft rock. You're actually correct. Really? I, I feel like that's like what smart people listen to, right? That's what studied people who are obsessed with... Academics. Exactly. Makes them smarter. Does it, though? Does simply listening to classical music make you smarter? I'm willing to give anything a try to raise a couple IQ points. Well, speaking of giving things a try and raising, these two kings are certainly going to be given a try by Chidwick. And how much more will he make it? Or will he wait in the weeds? De Stefano with a sub 30 big blind yeah, stack. Chidwick not looking to make it a size that scares him off of at least seeing a flop in position. And I do like this sizing a lot. Don't want to go too big, but don't necessarily want to go too small. Tip away maybe the strength of your hand as if you're begging for a call. And you see Dylan running an audit there. Seeing just how much he's got behind before opting to make this call. This is a bigger investment than I think he planned on making with this Queen-10, which turns into top pair, and here's trouble. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can blame him for calling pre with Queen-10. I think that if you assume that Stevie does have some three-bet bluffs there, then Queen-10 plays all right. But this is the sort of flop that's going to be very deceiving. And they don't have to be three bet bluffs. They could be strong aces, which right. miss this board. Absolutely. And now your queen 10 is in good shape. But of course, we know that's not the case. And a four to one favorite, Chidwick goes to work betting 350K. Yeah, let's be honest. If you're heads up against an aggressive opponent and you flop top pair against them in a three bet pot, you're probably fist pumping if you're Dylan. Well, he's going to be the pumpy, not the pumper. Barring improvement. Now he makes the call of 350. And a completely blank three of clubs. No flush draws on board. Do we continue to milk? Yeah, if you look at the stack to pot ratio, you see that De Stefano only has 1.4 million behind, and there's just a bit more than that in the pot. So Chidwick just trying to wonder what is going to get me paid to the max. I mean, if he knew that De Stefano here had top pair, I think going all in would still get a call and achieve that same result, but. What do you think? Small. 600 here and the rest on the river? Yeah. Five and a quarter, I think, is what he said. Yeah, just about third pot. In a way, it looks milky, but on the other hand, does look like maybe he's just trying to take it down for cheap, trying to represent a big hand. That's just it. The line is certainly associated with a big hand, but is a big hand present? That is the question. And even if it were, this is just so much hand for Dylan. You're not in the business of calling hands like this pre to get away from them on boards like this. Yeah, you're really just giving Stevie all the credit in the world for having an overpair or ace queen, king queen. Would there be any merit to Dylan just shoving it in there if he figures he's calling any river? Just trying to create some fold equity? Yeah, I think there would be. I think that considering what he has left in his stack, it definitely poses that exact issue. I don't think he's necessarily tanking right now because he's seriously considering folding. 
not that that's not a thought, but I think some of those other things you mentioned, Ali, is a little more likely. Here comes the call. Now, Dylan has under 900,000 back with 2.9 and change in the middle. And an eight on the end does complete some straights, the 10 jack and six seven. But how likely are those hands to be in Chidwick's range here? Certainly the 10 jack is blocked by Dylan's 10. And the 6-7 was a double gutter on the turn. Maybe there are some worlds in which he three bets that kind of hand pre and then gets after it on two streets. But instead, it is time to decide whether or not you want to play for your tournament life. Dylan. $47,000 separate first and second place. And Dylan makes the call, gets a look at the two kings, and it is a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Your event seven champion, Stephen Chidwick, with back-to-back -back final tables, third yesterday, first today. Thanks, Jeff. And indeed, Negranu, by the narrowest of margins, continues to rest atop the leaderboard with Sean Perry on his heels. That's it for event number seven. We certainly hope you enjoyed tonight's coverage. And on behalf of our entire crew here in Las Vegas and my partner Maria Ho, I'm Alina Jad saying so long, and we'll see you tomorrow for event number eight. Good night. <laughs>